I had a Mighty T Vac evacuation machine and it actually broke so I'm doing this cheap alternative until I get a replacement so I hope this helps you out so this is what we're gonna make today a handmade custom automotive fluid evacuation machine <laughs> get a good look at it next I'll show you what you need let's get started and these are the items that you'll need to complete this project you'll need an air vacuum pump of some sort I chose to go with the Pittsburgh which is the Harbor Freight brand um, there it is there it's primarily used for air conditioning systems um, pretty decent uh, vacuum pump for I think it's 18 19 dollars somewhere in there you don't need a small regulator like this um, this one I still have to put Teflon tape on I just kind of have it together um, you can control the air source at your air compressor so you don't really need that however I like to have the regulator so that I can control it at my pump you'll need an RTV sealant kit uh, with the applicator this applicator becomes the fitting that goes onto your pump for your suction hose um, you'll need a permanent marker some super glue utility knife a drill to drill your holes for your fittings which will go on top of your pickle jar the fittings I bought at AutoZone in a brake bleeding kit um, the brake bleeding, bleeding kit um, you can actually buy these separate from the kit itself um, in order to replace these in your kit this hose I got from AutoZone this is the hose I use for power steering evacuation so it's a little big if you're going to use if you're going to do this for a transmission which we will be doing tomorrow um, I have a longer thinner hose that I use for that so and you can use any brand of pickles or any jar as long as you know how many fluid ounces the jar is you could also keep empty one quart containers and just everything you pull out of there fill up each one however many you get is however many you pull out and uh, let's get started all right so I got my holes drilled and now I'm going to stick these through the top and I'll work those down in there so once I get them in better than that so I have the fittings pushed through I have the rubber hoses that are basically locking it onto the lid glued on with gel super glue don't worry about the super glue breaking down from the transmission fluid or the power steering fluid or whatever it is you use um, it's not going to get up that high and um, it never touches it so it's fine and RTV you know obviously can handle it so you're going to stick that on there get it kind of nice and snug I like to set them up and test them I got the the uh, vacuum pump set up I have the regulator set up to the air hose and I have the fitting that came with the RTV there's a new one I got several of them basically you force that onto that fitting and just kind of work it on there it works trust me as long as you get it on there and thread it on there decent put your hose onto that onto the, the thinner fitting is what I did and I got this full of water and we'll go through and we'll turn it on so everything's already set up I'll give it a little bit of see it filling up and you can adjust it you can go as low as you need to to where it's barely streaming or you can you know go up and really get it out of there quickly and once it gets up to about right there that's about 24 ounces so then you stop take that off and your power steering fluid or transmission fluid will be in there 
take a funnel and an empty transmission fluid or a quart that way you can measure it but remember this is 24 ounces so if you don't have anything to measure this holds 24 fluid ounces up to this line here so then you obviously do the math and whatever you pull out because you know if your transmission's leaking or your power steering pumps leaking it's not going to have the proper amount of fluid in there so you're not going to be able to get you know you'll you'll maybe say you'll get out three quarts you're supposed to have five measure it out you know that you only got three or two quarts low add five putting it back in so anyway we're going to see this thing in action tomorrow and um, I hope you guys, I know you, a lot of you do-it-yourselfers probably thought of something like this already. Yeah, you can use a hand vacuum pump too, but um, I uh, why not use this? I have it. It's cheap. Um, I'm going to use it. I got everything I need. It's easy to build, and it's easy to use, and you can make one anytime. All right, so I have it all set up out here, ready to suck it all out this morning. And got my air hose connected to the pump regulator and got this set up I used the longer hoses these are the hoses I use for doing the transmission so I got this one down in the transmission dipstick there we go so now we'll turn it on other hand here there it goes I could turn it up a little bit more but I'm not going to that's as loud as uh, high as I'm going to turn it up you can't hear me it's a little windy that's the reason why but once I fill that up I'll turn it down a little bit once I fill that up, 24 ounces. I'm going to fill these up. These are left over from a customer's job. Uh, most customers bring me what they can afford or what they want to use, and I keep the bottles. And uh, for this specific reason, so I should be able to pull five out of my out of my uh, transmission, five quarts, and that's it. Like, share, subscribe. It's a simple, cheap, inexpensive way to evacuate your transmission fluid or your power steering.